Well, welcome everyone to Digital Learning Day. This is one of the Microsoft Under the Microscope Word presentations, um, and we're concentrating on smart art. This is the voice of Julie Wainio, one of the tech assistants here at Parkview. If you have any questions about this presentation or any other technology-related questions, please feel free to come see me in Lab 207. In this tutorial, we're going to be briefly looking at some aspects of Microsoft Word that you may or may not be familiar with. I often find that people tend to have a lot of frustration with Word because it can or it won't do a lot of the fancy things that people have quote unquote seen it do in the past. An important fact to keep in mind is that Word is a tool to be used strictly for word processing documents. Trying to use it to create brochures, newspaper articles, or to insert charts, graphs, and pictures is indeed slightly problematic because the system is not really designed to accommodate that kind of content. This is not to say it can't be done, but using an application such as Publisher, especially if you're planning on using a lot of images or pictures, would probably be a better option for you. So today we're going to insert some smart art into a document, a very underutilized tool of words, uh, aspect of Word. Uh, to ke keep in mind that as we go through the tutorial, I am assuming that you as the user have a basic grasp of Word's functions such as going from tab to tab, highlighting text, and using keyboard shortcuts, such as control C, which is copy, control V as in Valentine, that is paste, and control Z as in zoo, that is the undo command. If this is not the case for you, please skip this tutorial and I'd be happy to help you with some word basics one-on-one. -on -one. All right, let's open up a blank word document first. Most of our computers have the link directly on the desktop so we can just double click that or if you don't see the icon as um, some of the substitute logins won't have word right on the on the desktop then you can still access word by going to the start button all programs productivity Microsoft Office and clicking on word the big royal blue W all right so one of the cooler aspects of Word that I have found is the use of smart art. Smart art allows the user to insert lists, process, cycles, or any other kinds of informational data in a stunning way in order to make it highlight a highlight in the paper. For my example today, I'm going to insert a cycle. Keep in mind I'm completely making up this information as I go along, and the presentation should not be quoted or used for reference in any way with regards to the written content. So to insert SmartArt, first I must go to the Insert tab and choose the SmartArt icon, which is indicated by a large green arrow. As you can see, there are many options to choose from. Once I open it up, I'm going to go ahead and choose a cycle. Now you have even more options. You can choose a Venn diagram. You can choose such as there, that's a Venn, Venn diagram. You can choose a radial cycle, you can choose a standard cycle, many, many, many others. I'm going to choose the standard cycle. So as you can see, the alteration window comes up and the system is prompting us to type in the different bubbles. I'm going to call these bubbles. starting with the very top or what would be the beginning of your cycle. I'm going to take you through my, to, in order to demonstrate this, I'm going to go ahead and take you through my morning makeup routine. This is not exactly highly educational, but I figured it was better than my own butchering of the water cycle or something along those lines. So please bear with me. So I'm going to go ahead and start typing and altering. Please watch closely. As always, we are going to insert our information first before we start goofing with the aesthetics of the smart art. So I'm going to go ahead and start here. So as you can see, as I type longer sentences or words, the chart will automatically correct itself to be the same size. 
You can change this and make some of the words appear larger than others, but I'm not going to as I feel it's better to keep everything the same size. You might want to do this, however, if you happen to be talking in depth about a certain part of the cycle in your paper. Now, okay, I'm going to go ahead and finish filling in the rest of these here. Okay, once again, completely making this up. Okay, now as you can tell, I have now run out of bubbles or steps in the cycle. Uh, let's say I need to add one more. So I have to go up to Add Shape. And you can see I can choose whether I want to put it after the current highlighted bubble or before. And I'm going to go ahead and choose After. And you can see it adds another bubble or another part to my presentation. So keep in mind this is a basic cycle and if I wanted to choose a lot of different information then um, I would have chosen a different template. For example here if I go on put on foundation I can choose add bullet and it adds some more info here. But once again, going with the, in order if you wanted to add a little bit more information to each bubble, um, this is a basic cycle, so you want to try and keep it very basic. If you wanted to add a lot of more information, you'd want to choose one of the different, um, one of the different templates. So as you can see, now that I'm done, everything is really, really tiny. I would like to make the entire thing bigger, so I'll go out to the very corner of the information pane, and... I can make the whole thing bigger. Okay. Keep in mind, I can only make it so big before it goes outside the margins of the document. I can either go to page layout to make my margins larger to correct this right here, with the margins, or I can change my layout from my orientation from portrait to landscape, and then I'd have more room to make this larger. It's a good idea to change your picture, change your formatting to landscape if you want to make your entire page the cycle. Um, if that's the case, I suggest you make your smart art a different document completely from that of your written paper or essay. This way you don't have to go through the pain of making some pages in your essay landscape and some of them portrait format, which is a pain in the rear. So in addition to making the size of the entire smart art larger or smaller, we can make the individual bubbles larger or smaller. Once again, I don't recommend this unless you're concentrating on one part of the cycle. So for example, if this were the water cycle and I was concentrating my essay on precipitation, I might want to make that bubble appear larger than the others. But as you can see, it does kind of mess with the aesthetics of the rest of the presentation. Okay, I'm going to hit Control z a couple times. There we go. Get it back. Now that I have all my information into the program, I can change the look of it to match the theme of my essay. So as you can see up here in the right-hand corner, if we go up to Smart Art Tools and Design, you can uh, change the style of the bubbles in addition to your color. So if I just click on these, you can see that the style kind of changes and see some of them even change sort of the orientation and it is sort of neat to play with but once again teachers you want to really tell your students that you want to get your content down before you goof with how it looks and remember others it's easier to read others, some as opposed to ones that are laying down or to the side or something. All right, and you can also change the colors. So I'm going to go up to change colors. You've got the rainbow options, or you can have the solid colored options as well. I'm going to pick one of the rainbows, why not? 
so you can see and you can individually change the colors or whatever you want to do you don't have to use the color format but it, it, aesthetically it's a little bit more pleasing if you just use the template okay finally we can go up into the format up by the tabs okay and now we can goof with things like what the text looks like what shape the bubbles are or even if we wanted to make it hollow or white in the middle so if we want to go We'll use, I'll use this one as a, an example. We can put a border around it and we can make it white in the middle or hollow, as I said. We can go up to change the shape and we can make them, you know, a little plus sign if we wanted to. Um, it, maybe if this were a math presentation, that might be kind of cool. Or, of course, we can always change the color of the text, we can change the outline, we can put some effects in and change how the how the text looks. All right. Once again, <laughs> I'm not really sure why we would want to goof with the text and stuff like that, but if you want to make it pretty and you think it's going to really add to your presentation or to your paper, go ahead and do that. Just keep in mind that um, the color printers are only located in certain labs, so if you do add a lot of color to your presentation, you will have to print out on a color printer. Otherwise, if you print this out in black and white, it's going to be gray and kind of muddy. Um, also, what you'll want to keep in mind is... Uh, the, the aesthetics of it are the last thing you want to deal with. The information is the most important thing. All right. And so finally, we can uh, also treat this like a picture. We can flip the bubble upside down if we want to. We can move it to the side. So if we wanted it, all the information to go in a circle, we could definitely do that. We can insert pictures into the picture if we wanted to. There's a lot of really cool stuff we could do with this. All right, so once we're finished and we're satisfied with our smart art, we're going to click outside the margins of our document. And you can see the editing window goes away. We'll hit enter. And now we can start typing normally. Again. Okay. So that's pretty much the basics of smart art. It's a great tool. Before I go, I'll show you a couple more examples here. Go to insert. We'll go to smart art. The hierarchy, that's a great thing to play with here. And I personally, I like the pyramids because I just think they're kind of cool. You can show the inverted pyramid if you're going to want to do a, um, you know, for health, that'd be a great thing to use. We have a process flow chart. With the arrows, those would be great business tools. Uh, the little gears there, those are really, really cool. Relationship ones, the bullseye, the standard graphs. And I personally feel that using SmartArt is actually a lot easier than using actually inserting a chart or inserting a graph. Um, it's just easier to insert the information and to alter it. If you So if you're students or if you don't have, you know, perfect numbers that you need to use a chart to represent, SmartArt is a great way to utilize that information so it's purely visible. All right, those are the ins and outs of SmartArt. I hope this was a helpful presentation for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to come see me. Enjoy Digital Learning Day. Thank you.